So today I'm reviewing a smartphone that recently came out. It is the Motorola Edge. This is the 2024 model of this phone, and it has a lot that I love about it and some things that I don't. But is it worth buying? And I would definitely say some of you should buy it, but it depends on the overall impressions that you have of it. So I'm gonna let you know what I think in this full review. So with all that being said, let's get right into it and let's talk about the Motorola Edge 2024. So recently I saw some reviews on this phone and some people weren't too happy about it. Some people said they hated the design, why? Well, it does have a curved screen and that's something some people might not like. And I definitely don't love curved screens, but some people don't like the vegan leather back. It does have a very nice leather feel to it and it's not glass, it's not super, super heavy. And some people really love heavy phones and some people think it makes it feel ultra premium. And some people don't, so this phone, it does have a little bit of controversy depending on which side of the fence you're on. But I think there's some people out there who are going to adore this phone, especially when you look at the prices that it's available at. So Motorola did release this for $550. Of course, that's for the unlocked model. But if you're looking out there at some prepaid carriers, and if you're shopping around at like Metro PCS, for example, you might be able to get this phone for free. And that is insane when you factor in what this phone really has to offer. This phone has very good speeds. It's one of those Snapdragon 7 processors, and it's actually gonna be very, very fast for most people. It does have very fast charging speeds. It does have water resistance. It has 4K video recording, and it does have a fairly good camera overall. There are still some compromises that we need to talk about. So a lot of this depends on what you're looking for. Are you looking for a phone with long software updates and things like that? Well, Motorola doesn't always have the best track record with updates, but if you're looking for a phone that gives you amazing hardware for the money, and especially if you see Motorola throw this phone on sale, and Motorola does that all the time with her phones. Well, in that case, I think a lot of you are going to consider buying this, and one reason is the design. Again, some people don't like it. They don't like this vegan leather. I get that. Some people really will. But if you look at it, the speakers on this phone, by the way, they do sound very, very nice and very, very full. They don't sound all that cheap. On the other hand, this does have an in-screen fingerprint reader, and that is a little bit poor, mainly because of the haptics. I don't love the haptic feedback there. If you are someone who cares about those little minute details, you might not like the vibration that you feel whenever you are using the phone. But I am in love with all of these new Moto phones and the leather on the back. I get it's a fox leather or whatever the case, but I still love the feel of it. I just love the leather feel, even if it's not a real leather, it still feels very, very nice to me. And I should also mention on the left side of this device, there is a quick button that you can actually program to different actions. And some people might like that too. And it does have a curved screen on the front and that's gonna be a little bit controversial. Again, some people love it. Personally, I would rather have a tempered glass screen protector applied to my phone and those curved screens make that very difficult. On the other hand, having a curved screen, it does make the phone a little more comfortable to hold. So it really depends on who you are as far as if you're gonna like that or not. And well, I think it's okay and I did get used to it. Now the display is very nice on this phone. It's a 6.6 .6 inch display. It's a 2400 by 1080 resolution. And this is a P-OLED display that gets 1300 nits of peak brightness. It's also a very, very good refresh rate, 144 Hertz. So that's what this phone provides for the money, especially if you're out there on a prepaid carrier, right? Getting a phone with a 144 Hertz refresh rate that just zooms through everything you're doing. Of course, this does have very, very good performance. This does have a Snapdragon 7 S Gen 2 processor, a nice 5,000 milliamp battery, 68 watt charging speeds. You even get 15 watt wireless charging and you get water resistance, right? They're throwing all of the specs at you. And when you look at the screen, they gave you just about everything they could. Like it does look super premium and super nice. It feels very smooth whenever you're using it. And whenever I did watch entertainment on my device, especially YouTube, I watch YouTube like all the time, like a lot of other people, it just looks so, so good, especially when you're turning on that 4K and really just taking in the colors on this display, it looks phenomenal. But outside of that, I would say if you're comparing it to, well, some seven, $800 phones, yeah, it might not be as good as the S23 Ultra or S24 Ultra, but again, it's still a tremendous display. When you look at performance, 
Again, it is great. It's a step below flagship level. Again, it's a Snapdragon 7S Gen 2 processor with eight gigabytes of RAM. I was flying through pretty much everything I was doing. This phone is extremely fast, but remember it is a step below a flagship phone. So if you are expecting flagship performance, you should also expect that it's not going to get quite as good as again, an S23 Ultra or an S24 Ultra. You are gonna see a step down there as far as performance, but it's very, very close and I was surprised surprised at how good it really, really was. Everything on this phone does feel fast, and that's why I was so impressed with it, because if you give me a great display, if you give me great performance, and if you give me great battery life, that's really what I want in a phone. And water resistance and wireless charging, those things are bonuses, and of course I also want really high charging speeds. So one other thing we have to talk about, it's the cameras on this phone. And the cameras are very, very good, but they are going to be a step below some other phones for the money. So again, at $550 for the retail price, I do think if you compare this to the Google Pixel 8a, the Pixel 8a will give you better photos. But I would say that the camera is not all that bad. I don't think it's so much worse that it's just not worth considering. I think the camera is actually pretty good here. And if you look at the photos I took, I did get some fairly nice photos. Also, 4K video, I think it does a very good job with 4K video too. I didn't have a lot of problems there either, but it is going to be a step below some other phones. I would say the OnePlus 11, or technically the OnePlus 12R, because the OnePlus 12R has the same main camera as the OnePlus 11. Yeah, it might get you slightly better photos, but it's not gonna be all that much better. The same thing with the Google Pixel 8a. So I think the camera is good, but it's just a little bit below the competition whenever you're looking at this price point. So if you're willing to take a hit in a couple areas Areas, you're going to get a tremendous phone for the money. Again, you're not going to get a flagship processor, but you will get a Snapdragon 7S Gen 2. So it is a little bit of a jump down, but for most people, this phone is going to fly through pretty much whatever you're doing. And it does have eight gigabytes of RAM in the base model. What about other people who want the absolute best as far as haptics? Well, if you care about how your phone vibrates, well, you're not going to like the vibration motor here quite as much. If you want a ultrasonic fingerprint sensor. Well, it's going to be an optical one, but it's still going to be very, very smooth and you're going to get into your phone quickly anyway. And if you're someone who doesn't like a curved screen, well, yeah, this does have a curved screen and this does feel very, very lightweight. And if you're someone who cares about that, well, it might be a little bit too lightweight for you. This does weigh 173 grams, which is about 6.1 ounces. So if that bothers you, well, sure, there are some minor things to dislike here, I get it. If you need the absolute best flagship device out there, sure, there are some other devices out there, but you're going to pay flagship money to get those other specs. You're getting almost all of the best things. They just cut back with the haptic motor. They might've cut back with some build materials, but outside of those things, you're getting a 5,000 milliamp battery. The battery life is great on this phone. I would say you'll get around eight hours of screen on time. So you're getting really good battery life. You're also getting a nice OLED display, maybe just a small step down from some flagship devices out there. And you're getting really good performance, not the best, but still really good. But overall, the question about this phone really comes down to if you're okay with the sum of these compromises. And is it really worth it? Because the software updates, yes, Motorola is only promising two software updates for this phone as far as big operating system updates. And they are planning to do three years of bi-monthly security patches. You have to ask yourself, am I okay with that? Because Samsung and Google will give me much better software support. Are you okay with the vibrations just feeling a little bit off compared to some higher end phones? Are you okay with the curved screen? You have to ask yourself, do the sum or is the sum of all these compromises, is it really worth it to me? It's not significant, it's not a ton, but in exchange, you're getting a phone for $550 that I think is very, very competitive. But the real big difference with this phone is gonna be when it does go on sale because I know Motorola does have tremendous sales on their phones and this phone is going to be especially good to buy on those prepaid carriers. So I would say if you're seeing this at full price, it's a good phone for the money. I don't think it's a bad phone. I think the OnePlus 12R is a little bit better because it does have that curved screen. The display is gonna be a little bit better on that phone. It is going to have a flagship chip and it's gonna have very similar features and the haptics will even be a little bit better. But this phone still does very, very well. And if you look at Metro PCS or if you find it a Cricket or some of these other prepaids, if you pay under 300 bucks, 
or even if you buy it unlocked and maybe you see it on sale for 400 or for 350 this Moto Edge is a very good phone for the money. I love the back. I love this vegan leather. It feels absolutely great. I personally like that the phone is a little bit lighter. And even though it's not quite as good as the OnePlus 12R, it's still very, very close. So I would recommend it, but I would recommend you wait for some sales or I would recommend you go to some prepaid carriers. Otherwise, if you're seeing it at full price, it's not bad. It's still worth getting, but I would say the OnePlus 12R and some other phones like the Pixel 8a, those phones will probably be a little bit better for the money. So hopefully this video does help you out. Please give me a like and give me a sub. That would mean a lot to my channel. Also check out those affiliate links in the description. That is a great way to support my channel. So thank you so much for watching again. I really hope you have a great day and I really, really hope you enjoy your week. Thank you.